Hi. Hi. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Good, good. I'm so sorry. No, no, it's totally fine. It's great. It's an honor to speak with you. Thank you. Me too. How have you been? Very good, thanks. Yeah, good. just be good. running in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Here it's not as bad as, as it could be. Where are you located? La Crosse, Wisconsin. Nice, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there, right? It can be. It can be, but we've had very mild. It's 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 kind of shorts weather for us being in the 30s. So <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so great, great, great to be with you. And so what we would hope to do, if if it's okay with you, is just to do a trying to get people to know what we're doing here with our event coming up in June and getting yes. them to come out. So we put the posters out and everything and people keep telling me all over the place that they see that you're coming. And they're so excited that oh. you're going to be with us. Um, okay. So, yeah, so, so that's, that's been, that's been huge for us, but we thought if we could capture some video and do some audio, you know, just about why people should come and what they should expect and just to hear from you a little bit. So I just have some questions just to kind of get, help us get those little clips that we can put out there in social media and, and whatnot. Oh, that's nice. Yes. If that works, if that <laughs> works. So, yeah. And so the one thing is, is what we've seen is, and, and maybe you've seen this at all the events you've done all over the world. It, it seems like it's easy for us to get people to come to these events who are already going to church and mass and they're involved in their faith, but mm -hmm. to get the ones on the fence and the ones who maybe have fallen away, how do we get those people to come in and, and draw them in as well? And so that's a couple of the different directions we're going to go. Um, so I guess one, one, I guess, soundbite clip uh, video is, is could you just provide just a general invitation to the people of the diocese of La Crosse and and surrounding diocese because we have other dioceses who are going to come in as oh. well. We're very excited to have them, but but to to invite them to be at this Eucharistic rally uh, yeah. on June seventh. Thank you so much. You know that is one thing I've seen with my story, and I call it a privilege God gave me is that people religiously they can take a find a part where they can see the power of prayer mm. what it can do for you but there is also another side of human experience yeah. you know people go through pain catholic or not christian or not you you live with life you you go through difficult situations and with that i have seen people who come without at all practicing religion who say to me you story have changed mine you story have helped me to, to forgive to have hope when I have lost hope. One time I will never forget, I met a girl who told me she had planned to kill herself. And she, yes, to commit suicide. She wrote letters to her family, everyone. And she, have, she did not want to read my book, Left to Tell, even if she had it, because she thought, oh, that is too much about God. Second is too much pain. So she said, if I'm dying anyway, why not read this painful you know, situation? So she said she started reading it. And she forgot, literally, like she forgot to kill herself. She read, let to tell my story until in the morning. And the morning, this word was, her decision was, I don't know who helped this woman, but whatever she did, I am going to do it. And I'm <laughs> going to follow the God she's following so that he can help me too. So she came to me a few years later. She got married. She was joyful. She was crying out of joy. And she said, if it wasn't for your story, I would have been dead. So with that, yes, have, I have made stories. I mean, I speak to Jewish people. I speak to Muslims. I have gone to their places who invited me to speak about my story to Mormons, you know, yeah. non-Christians, different groups. And I, I have gone to Russia, you know, <laughs> to speak there. And I remember when I was there, one man came outside. He said, you really think that somebody can forgive like every day? Monday to Saturday, you can live this life you're telling us. I'm like, yes, you can. I will try. And he was smiling. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> That's, that is amazing. It, yeah. it sounds like, you know, one of the one of the draws to come in to, to an event like this and, and to be, you know, and hear your story, you know, in person is, is that maybe in our world today where people have lost hope and that, and that hearing your story, but also being with other people who, who are searching as well is, is, is a reason to have hope and to hang on to hope. 
Yes, that is one of the big things. There you go. So hope is not Catholic. Hope is not just right. Christian. Because God created us and we have God in our hearts. We have put a piece of him in, in our own hearts. We, we have the sense of what is right and what is wrong. And I believe, of course, consciences can become blind and, you know, and sleepy. And then you don't anymore feel too much of what is right, what is wrong. However, we all have that sense of goodness inside. Yeah. We hear the voice of bad and good. Yeah. So what I have loved again is like to see people hearing my story and say, yes, hope is one of the big things that comes. Mm -hmm. There is one man who told me, he said, I used to make excuses. Every ferry I had, I thought, you see, it's because I didn't have a mother. That's why I made it. That's why that relationship didn't go well. That's why I lost that job. And he said, after you heard you speak, I have no more excuses. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I need to exercise my efforts. You had nothing. And yet you held on to that hope and you did with what you had. Yeah. So I, I see so many examples. Again, yeah, truly, truly, I don't think my story is attracting just religious people. Mm -hmm. They definitely have incentive to that because you realize as a Catholic, as a Christian, I, I really went into my faith to get strength. Yeah. But forgiveness is for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for, love is for everybody. To be kind to somebody is for everyone. Right, right. Do you feel like people, and I, I feel like this for myself sometimes, that sometimes I've lost, sometimes the ability to forgive, that I hold on to things, yeah. you know, for way too long, you know, than longer than I should. And understanding how to forgive. Maybe people don't know how to forgive. You know, yeah. we've, we've lost that somewhere along the way. I, and I know I've struggled with it in my life here and there, but but having the ability to forgive someone, and I know your story in mm. the forgiveness is is, um, is 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 so powerful. It's, but it's right. powerful from the inside of what it does to us on the inside. Yeah, oh, as well. Think, yes. So your question is to to how, how can you tell people how to forgive? Yeah, how to forgive? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, that is a good and question, and and sometimes hard, but also simple. Mm. But from what I have seen, okay, taking it from my example, from my, the time I really struggled with forgiveness, first, there are lies that come to your mind when you are trying to forgive, when you are hurt. The first instinct that comes, which is human, you want the other person to hurt so that they can feel what it feels, which will not even change you. Mm -hmm. You want them to hurt, thinking that if they hurt, then I will feel better. Yeah. And then it happens, and then you don't feel better. Mm -hmm. the anger becomes even sometimes more maybe you feel better in a second like a good them too they can see what is you know i'm going i'm going through what they cause me but mm -hmm. then the pain comes back so i went through that time of that blindness when I, I thought if only they can go through what i'm going through if only they can feel it then they will know what they have caused me but yeah. then it won't change anything yeah or i was angry then i would thought fantasize about how i can revenge Mm. I'm going to be, to be a soldier. I'm going to train my body. I'm going to throw grenades. And then I can almost see myself revenging. Kill mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Kill everybody. Kill them in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Then I, I felt oh, my breathing was changing and my I'm sweating. I feel like I've accomplished something just in my thoughts mm -hmm. without anyone touching me. Yeah. And then at the end, I will start again. And then I will do that. And I will do that. So I realized that Anger became like a sickness. Mm -hmm. It became a sickness. It became it became an obsession. It became something I couldn't be done with. It was like something like obsessing you, mm -hmm. and you have to keep going through it. And I was hurting. So it wasn't the answer I was looking for. It was more about experiencing that bitterness, sweetness, call it whatever. You know, when you mm -hmm. are angry, you think like you're doing something good. But at the end, it was always me who was hurt. Yeah. When I'm done with the story, I'm like, so what did I accomplish? I was really angry right now. I have mm -hmm. a head out of anger. But what did I accomplish? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I am still with that thing. So I was so angry. I always say, God, push me in a corner. Like, you want more? Fine. Get more angry. And then I would think, anybody would agree with me that I'm angry. Because most of the time, when we're angry with something, a situation, we want companion. <laughs> We want somebody to agree with us. Yes. The more they agree with us, we get more angry. We yeah. feel satisfied and then more angry. 
So I was in a situation where I was like, is there anyone who's not going to agree with me how unfair it is? This is everyone will agree with me. Then what? I get more angry. It, mm-hmm. it is not helping. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm being affected physically. I was so much in the pain out of anger that I started to get scared. I said, wait, when people are sad, they cry and tears comes out. Look at how much water that can come out of your own body right. out of sadness. And I started to worry that something is flowing into my body. It's mm-hmm. not coming out. This anger, for some reason, is, get, is getting me bleeding hard, is getting my blood sweating, I mean, my body sweating. So what is happening inside? Mm-hmm. And I started to remember what we learned in school, that anger actually can get you sick. It's a sickness. It can get your liver sick. It can get your kidney sick. I agreed because the amount of the anger I had, there is no way something is not happening in my body. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if sadness can flow this, there's a poison going inside. Mm-hmm. So with that or that, and realizing that my anger is not accomplishing anything, that's when I started to say, help me. I need to forgive. But then I don't know how to forgive. Yeah. So it's really genuinely a normal thing to me I was going through because the first step to me is realizing I'm angry. And what is the use of my anger? Like be ob- objective, be rational with that. What yeah. is my anger doing? What is this helping me with? Second, suppose I accomplish what I want to do because I went there too. I said, wait, I feel I will feel better if maybe I'm able to revenge. Okay, suppose I succeed to kill 8 million people. What will happen next? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> this was so unfair. I hated not only people who were doing this to me, but their children. Mm-hmm. But what happened when you hate a tribe, when you hate a race, when you hate a country, you end up hating everybody. Yeah. So suppose I do that. And then I went back. I went to the, suppose I get there. Okay, wait, I would have killed innocent people too. But what, what does that help? What kind of country will be if I succeed to kill everyone? And do I really think objectively, truthfully, that I can kill this many people and maybe me also live? And if I die with that, then what is the satisfaction? Yeah. So it, it was a reasoning through my anger. I gave it a go ahead. You know, sometimes you feel anger, you don't know I shouldn't be. But you don't even know why you shouldn't be. Then you keep like flirting with this evil. So I gave myself every reason. Be angry. Go all the way. We, we suppose you have all the, every power. What will you do? And then I kept going. I kept going. I'm like, oh my God, this anger can can end up really destroying me and destroying many people if I I have my ways. So why am I doing this? This have managed, whatever this evil is, have managed to get me to be worse than those who are trying to hurt me because I was going to do worse if I had my chance. So it was through thinking that way, objectively, then I said, what do I do? I went to my faith. It was the only thing that I have seen from what I learned, Jesus saying, forgive. Then I turned to him. I say, how? How? How do you forgive somebody who's killing your mom? How do you forgive somebody who is trying to kill you and kill everybody? Because there was nowhere else. I knew anger was useless. It wasn't going to do anything good. Mm-hmm. Because we are all motivated by goodness, by something good. Yeah. But now that I know is really useless, but I'm overtaken by this thing, I have managed to justify that I have a good reason to, how do I get rid of it? Because this is not life. I have a headache, my pain, my muscles are aching everywhere. This is, what do I do? The only way was to turn to Jesus. And going through our Lord's prayer, going through him, asking him, begging him, help me, how do I do that? Because I couldn't lie to him. I remember even trying. I remember saying, okay, fine, I forgive, I forgive them. Five minutes later, it was like oil and water started to separate and my anger will come on the top again. My wow. anger will come again. And then I would go, okay, fine, I lied. I didn't forgive them. Yeah. And then, again, I'm like, I need to be a good person. I need to forgive. No, it won't happen. Until I literally have to face him and say, help me. Yeah. And what I'm seeing, if you are a God who is capable of everything, if I'm asking you to protect me in this bathroom, then you are capable to protect me. You're capable to even change my heart. Mm-hmm. 
Because I don't think, I think like many Christians, we are Christians by name, but we are not really even challenging Jesus. What do you mean? What do you mean love everybody? Can you really love everyone? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, he will win. He will win in the end. And when he wins, he makes sense. <laughs> yes. It makes sense. It was when I was able to see when he was dying and he said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they do. There was a supernatural something that happened to me, I believe. But there is also something very logical that happened. They don't get it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I didn't get it when I was thinking about killing everybody. Revenging. Oh, you kill my mom and dad, wait and see. I'm going to kill your whole village. That's what my head was telling me in my anger. So how did I make sense? What is life? Just end it? That's it? And then we die? That's it? Now mm -hmm. I have to worry, where do we go after that? Yeah. So when forgiveness came in, it, makes, it made sense I did they not existed. They don't know what they do. Yeah. And you know what? I, can, I have lived through life. I do a lot of little experiment. You can have people who go through what you went through. They will not be changed. Mm -hmm. They won't be touched. They can hurt and go exactly through what you went through. Nothing can change. Mm -hmm. Because when we are angry, we are hoping if that happens to them, then they can go to their knees and say, oh, oh, now I understand. I'm sorry for doing that. No, right. it's not what they will happen. I realize, let me pray that Jesus will bring them to their knees to exactly go in that place of saying, how can I do that? Instead of me trying to make it happen. Yeah. Instead of me trying to control it. And my good God have done that. Yeah. I have gone to prison when I have met killers of my family. Mm. Regretting. I have seen a man who killed my cousins. And he told me, this is his words. He said, I know you forgave us. But he said, it was easier to be in prison than being outside. At least I knew I was paying for something. But now they forgave me. They gave me freedom to go out. I, I, I deserve to be in prison. And he said, you are free. You didn't do wrong. But me, this is what the man said. He can still see the people he have killed. Mm. He hears their voices. He, he said, I don't sleep. I feel like an outcast and I don't know how I can forgive myself. I'm not kidding. I had to kind of helping him how he can forgive himself. I'm like, look, you go to Jesus. Because I truly felt he was genuine. He said, I miss people I killed. I don't know what I was doing. I feel like there was something they were going to sleep. And maybe tomorrow they will come to life again. A year later, I did and it was for good. Now I'm left with that. I'm left with them begging me for mercy. And those images are stuck in my head. Yeah. So yeah. you can see when people do wrong, and I truly mean it as a Catholic, I go to confession every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, I will not do sin knowing I'm going to sin. However, yeah. anytime I look through my day, I'm like, why did I say that? Mm -hmm. Why did I not do that? Why did I not wake up early to do my work? Yeah. Why did I, you know, why did I even rush through prayer? Why did I get late at mass? You know, there's always like a little thing. Why did I answer that person that way? What that would have cost me? Or I look back in a year ago, I wish I didn't do that. So sometimes it takes time. To go back to understand what you could have done, you didn't do, or what you did, you didn't do. Even when you are trying to do examination of conscience, always. So, yeah, it's really, yeah, it is really important to forgive. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I think there's, there's so many beautiful things and compelling things about your story, and one of the, one of the, one of the many things that, that jumps out at me is the, the beautiful thing is, is the fight to stay connected to Christ. That it's. It's it's not I just forgive and I'm done and I'm I'm off and, and everything's great. It's it's that fight to go back and like you said, the anger would rise again and rise again and, and you fought to stay in it and fought to stay in it. And I think I think that fight is something that it, it, the one of the many parts of your story that's that's so compelling is is the fight to stay in it that that sometimes we've lost the ability to fight for our faith. Um, yes. And, with you're right, very right. So, and I feel like we don't fight enough for our faith, but we don't even question enough of our faith. Mm. It's almost like a political club. We just like, you know, like we belong to, but yeah. we forget it have rules. To belong is to yeah. belong with your heart. It's to belong with your heart. It's not just to belong to be a part of. We went to dinner together. We went to mass and sat together. And when you go home and you're like, what did the priest say again? <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Or I, and it happens to me sometimes. I read yeah. the Bible. 
And then two hours later, what did I read? What was the reading of today again? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to, to, to do better. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you talked too about the, about, you know, having that anger that that was trying to find the answer in that anger. And, and it's interesting. You said that the, uh, the, the title of our, the name of our event for that day is the answer Eucharistic rally that, that Jesus is the answer to everything. And so hopefully our hope is that people will come, um, you know, trying to find the answer to what, why they're angry or why they're sad or, or what's the meaning of their life or, or what's next in their life, whatever it is. Why finding that worried. answer. Exactly. Why they are worried about being here. One of the things I remember asking God in the, when I was hiding in that bathroom, I really wanted to know the meaning of my life. How did I get here? Mm. What am I supposed to do? Where do I go after this? Mm. And once I understood the journey, the big picture, then I can really put my effort here we are created for heaven yeah we are here to to live with love with jesus following his guidance and his his rules and respecting his commandments love god above and love one another every day just make little steps and just see his hand helping you in everything and you don't know what is coming tomorrow you don't know when he's going to call you it can be today it can be tomorrow it can be in 50 years in yeah. it's eight years just living knowing that heaven is there and you cannot place yourself in the whole picture, I am here, is the best thing ever. Yeah. Then you can work. You look at students. You go to school knowing I have four years. It's not easy to study for yeah. exams, for quizzes. Yeah. But what gives you the courage is knowing in four years I will graduate. Yeah. And I will do this and that. The same as athletes. They, broke, they break their bones. They get wounded. They keep going with joy. Hurting in body, but with joy in their hearts because they know I can win. Yeah, I know what is coming, what can happen, what is possible. But as Christians, if we really take it seriously, go to the Bible, the teaching of the uh, our Lord, yeah. you know, the importance of that Eucharist and really follow him to find him. He's the answer. Every word he says yeah. is literally what we need to be happy, to be able to take tomorrow, to be able to live today. To be able to be joyful, he's the answer for everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is accepting him with the heart and knowing what he asked for and be it. Mm -hmm. If he said, pass this way, drive this road, and you want to take the other one, you're going to have accidents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's his answer because he has the answers. One man, one good priest told me after the genocide, he saw me very broken and very sad. He said, you know, to ask me to tell him my story. I told him. And then he said, you know, you are not as broken as many people. I'm like, are you kidding me? Can't you see me? I'm crying. And, you know, I lost my whole family. It's just like I'm devastated. Like, Can't you see me? I'm broken. I was, actually was hoping he would give me an answer. Like, oh, this is what you do. You know, mm -hmm. this is the pill. Then you will feel happy. Mm -hmm. But this is it. He said, no, you are not broken. What you are lacking is you are missing the affection of your loved ones. Mm. How your mom loved you, your brother, but somehow for some reason, which I know for sure is prayer, is, is me talking to our Lord in the bathroom, you know, is me struggling with him, helping me to forgive and asking him a question, answering, you know, he being it really, that would help me together. Then after that, he said, but you have also, you're hurting from lack of affection. Mm -hmm. He said, there is a way you can have it. In the infinite wisdom of God, there is a way you can have that affection. Mm -hmm. He said, wow, my mom and dad are dead. My brothers are dead. He said, no, by giving it. And he said, be careful how you give it. Mm -hmm. Give it, first of all, to people who need it most. Go to the homeless. Mm -hmm. Feed them. The food you wanted to eat, give it to them. The food your mom could have given you. Don't give them the leftovers. Yeah. Give them a good meal you want to eat too. Go to the orphans. Go and play with them. Hug them as if your mom was hugging you. Mm -hmm. Like imagine that love they gave you. Give it to them. Yeah. Clean them. Go to the hospital. Visit the people who have no one to visit them. The ones who are lonely. Mm -hmm. Care for them. Give them a t-shirt you wish. Take them a meal you wish to have. If you do that, the affection will come back to you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, really? you think so? Yeah. How? Yeah. I mean, that's the Bible. That's what Jesus tells us. Yeah. I I started to go to the Mother Teresa orphanage in Rwanda, and I would play with those kids. 
one within my shoulder, another one within my head, another one within my embrace on my lap. They would be just like walking over me. And I let them do what I know I did to my mom. Yeah. What, what she was when I was that age, you know, yeah. love them how I, I hug them how I wanted to hug somebody I love, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. a kid, of course. Yeah. I f- them, I cut their nails, I clean them, and they will laugh, I dance with them, you know, their age. And I'm not kidding. I will go home with my heart filled up. Mm. Wow. Filled up. I will go to the hospital and look for the people who have no one to yeah. bring them. And they will do it. And they will look at me with those eyes filled with tears. Like, thank you. You mm. just we us. You just came to visit me. You don't even know me. And I will feel my heart filled. And that became my life. Who knew that will stop me from de- feeling depressed? You know, feeling like I have no one. Yeah. Now I have the whole world. It's up yeah. to me to give myself. Yeah. But that's Jesus. Yeah. Exactly what he said. Yeah. So every word he says, every guidance he, he gives us, there is a tip for us, for mm-hmm. our peace, for mm-hmm. our joy, to feel loved, to yeah. live a good life. Yeah. If we were to do it our way, I think, give me more, give me more. I think I will be fine. Yeah. And then I have, why is it I'm not feeling better? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We yeah. and we try to fill it. It's similar. We try to fill that that void with other things that just doesn't. Even you know, you talked about the anger. The, that did not fill that void. You know, no. and do it. Uh, our desire for for things, material things, for the things yes. that we want, it doesn't do it. You know, and yeah. yeah and I know you said. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, people who end up fasting, usually you're like, oh, if only I can have that chocolate, if only I can have that, this and that. And then you realize people who fast are the ones who are happier, who take one day, month, and a week or two to fast. They're more put together. At least when I do that, I really, I am happy. I, I just feel like something good happened to me when I fast. But yeah. before I start fasting, oh, I have a headache. You know, oh, no, no, no. I Let me fast tomorrow. Let me do it next year. Actually, it's not even good. You know, yeah. I have so many reasons why I shouldn't fast. But the moment I do it, especially at the end, like prayer. I started mm-hmm. my rosary. Or maybe let me text a friend. Let me do this first. Let me do this first. That when I put myself, no, I need to, which I do every day. I do my rosary every day. And when I do at the end, I have no more desire. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. So yeah. we need to be around each other in faith. We mm-hmm. need to pray Jesus together in faith. Mm-hmm. And, and we can encourage each other. We are yeah. so kings. You know, we have to love one another. We need to be together. We need to be with Jesus in the in same mm-hmm. in the same voice and, and be there and celebrate him because he's he's it. He's the answer. Yeah. He's the answer. And, and you, you talked about too, that, you know, that desire for community, just like that, we need to be together. And even, even as I think you said uh, in your anger, you were wanting other people to be angry with you. Yes. And we, we want, we want to bring people along with us, but then the flip side of that, you know, you come to a Eucharistic rally like this, you're, you're in that community where your your people are coming together and, and they're, they're in the right frame of mind in that right uh, and blessings are given. You yes. know, I met, I met, excuse me, yeah. I met one uh, exorcist recently. I think, I don't remember his name exactly, but and I met one exorcist recently. I asked him, what do you see? What is going on these days? It seems like the world sometimes, and you know, there's so much extreme about people going away from God and other coming closer to God. What do you see when it comes in the world of possession? He told me, after COVID, possession of the devil is 500%, have increased 500%. Wow. And which was scary. I said, but what happened? What causes that? He said, because people have gone away from church, have gone away from worshiping together, have gone away from receiving the Eucharist. They went to the computer, just watching images. They need to be together. They need to pray together. They need to receive the Eucharist. The, the churches were closed. And that made the possession of the devil increase 500%. Mm. You can see around the world now, uh, exorcists are being very famous. People yeah. want to, because people are getting possessed by the enemy. And it's yeah. Part of it. yeah. yeah. And I think the enemy convinces us that things are okay and this is okay, you know, and, and, and it's not that bad if you do this. And, and, and it just gently leads us away from, from Christ. From Christ. Um, and that's hard. 
That's it's hard. hard. And, and that's where hard. our hope is for the answer, Eucharistic rally. We're hoping that that this is something for people who have felt led away from some point or have fallen away, that this is, I'm going to, I don't know what's going to happen today, but I'm going to go to this Eucharistic rally and just let Jesus do his work on me. And uh, truly, I would like to, in, in, in the, as you say, I would love to, if anyone will see this, to just invite people. If you hear about it, just come and try it. Yes. yes. And later you can send a message. You can say, it didn't help me. There's no one who ever closed, even the people who don't pray, who ever came close to Jesus and left mass saying, ah, oh, it was so bad. Nothing changed. Yeah. Or anyone who have gone to Eucharistic, you know, Congress, or who have gone to church, who have gone to gathering, a pilgrimage or a retreat, who have gone home saying, I can't believe I lost my time. It is before you go that you have that thing that is pulling you and telling you, don't go. It's useless. Yeah. It won't do anything. But after that, you feel like, wow, it feels better. Yeah. It is the reason why you feel better, because our Lord was there. That's right. That's yeah. right. Once Our Lady in Kibeho, Our Lady appeared in a place called Kibeho in Rwanda. And it's one apparition of Our Lady approved by the Vatican, the only one so far. She used to say, my children, leave your homes and go to church. Leave your home and go to pilgrimages, to retreats. If you go in the name of God, even if again you are questioning, you want answers. I promise you, the things you have left home, you could have done in two years, they will be fixed maybe in one day when you come back, mm -hmm. you will have an answer that can just change everything. Something yeah. been done 10 years in two minutes, the answer comes. So he said, when you go, go with all your heart. Yeah. You go for God. You go to God in the name of God, go. But I promise you, you will have a fruit that mm -hmm. will be good for you, for mm -hmm. you own good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so what, um, if we were just to ask like you, cause I've asked this question from several people. We've been doing some different videos, but what has the Eucharist meant to you in your life? Oh, Whew. I know it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it's a big question. It means, I mean, makes me want to cry literally yeah. Yeah. because it means everything. Yeah. I have, I love one quote of Jean Paul II, Saint Jean Paul II now, where there is this image where he's holding the Eucharist and he say, in this bread, there is a solution to every problem. In this bread, there is everything I want and I am and I need. That's it. That's yeah. just here. If they say that possession have increased 500% because people are not receiving the Eucharist, because people are not going to church. Yeah. It's because they have lacked Jesus. Jesus is there to fight for us. Yeah. We are between two forces. We, you see more people committing suicide because they lose hope. Yeah. Because they think it's, there's nothing out there until they come back to God. And you, you feel everything means something good, amazing. It's a gift. The Eucharist is everything. There is answer in the Eucharist in every way. The Eucharist is Jesus living among us. Yeah. It's Jesus becoming humble enough to be in that little tiny bread. Yeah. I go to this every day. And mm. I used to think like, oh, another mass, another mass. Do I have to go? I just go to obligatory Sunday. Now I realize it's for me. Yeah. I need God for my family. I need Jesus for my, my loved ones. I need Jesus in my affairs, yeah. in my work. Yeah. I'm nothing without him. I need yeah. to go to, to receive the Eucharist. Yeah. I need to, to worship my king. Mm. You know, to go there. And the more our lady used to tell us, when you think about Jesus... When you go to him, when you receive him, it's like you become one with him. Yes. Yeah. And then his strength and protection flow through you. Yeah. The more you go far away from him, you are alone. You fight for yourself. Yeah. And it's hard. But you go to him, you receive him. And instead of grace, of course, you come to pray. You get together like this. Yeah. You inject yourself. She, she used the word, a wreath, the wreath mm. power. You inject yourself in the wreath of the flowers of heaven, Jesus and Mary, and their healing fly through you, flow through you. Yeah. Their joy flow, you know, flow through you. The yeah. peace flow through you. So it is really for our own good to receive the Eucharist, to love the Eucharist, because he's everything. That's yeah. what heaven have given us. And I saw what the genocide was. I saw what pain can be in this world. I saw what hatred can be mm -hmm. when there's no Jesus. When you push him aside, 
every single person suffered during the genocide. Yeah. Many times, many people thought those who died, they were better off because the suffering that followed, that was there, it was a worse thing. To live without somebody, you, your family, your home destroyed, your clothes is burned up. Your neighbors have done that. Now you can't even have them either. Mm. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah. 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 And the devil is always good about separating people and dividing yeah. people and, right. and Jesus brings them together. And that's why we named this event the answer, because we're like, what else, what else are we going to name it? <laughs> it's the he is the answer. And I mean, one thing that occurred to me recently, you know, we're receiving the Eucharist, is that when I when I receive the in the, in the priest, you know, the body of Christ, and that's the, an invitation to me, you know, to receive him. And my amen is the affirmative yes. But I, I, I realized recently there's a second invitation that happens, which is when I consume him, that is my invitation to him to live in me and live through me. And, oh. and so I, and when I receive the Eucharist, now I'm, I'm remembering I'm also inviting him. There's an active part of me that's inviting him to live through me. And then to also think about what is my life going to look like when I walk through those doors to go home? It better look different because I'm carrying him with me. He's in me. Yes. And you scared the devil away. Yes. He knows yeah. now you have him in you. If right. you don't reject him out of terrible sins and you just re receive him often, then the devil is scared of you. Mm. But our Lord lives in you. Recently, a good priest also explained to me something we know, but reminded us about what the Eucharist is, the importance of the Eucharist. And he spoke about what God spoke to Moses about how the one of the plague was going to kill the firstborn of the children in Egypt and the Pharaoh have hardened his heart. He said, kill a lamb of one year and put blood on the house of the Jews, the Israelites. Then, so that death will not come, will not kill your children, put blood on there. And then he gave them direction how to dress after. And he said, and after, gather with your family and eat the lamb. Mm. That's when, that is wow. only and only when the perfect sacrifice will be done and then death will overpass your home. Mm -hmm. If they only put the blood and didn't eat the lamb, it was still the same. Yeah. The sacrifice was not full. So it was only full when they eat the lamb. Yeah. And that is what Jesus does to us. Yeah. We have to eat his blood and body. In the Eucharist, yeah. every Mass is a pleading to God, offering a sacrifice. Forgive us. Forgive us for our sins. For what you have given then, you gave your body once and for all. But today, we again offer Jesus, God, the Father a perfect sacrifice. Your mm -hmm. Son, body, soul, and divinity of your Son in the Eucharist. And then after that, partake the body. Eat it. Yeah. And once you eat it, then our sins are forgiven fully. Yeah. Then our world is able to go on. Mm -hmm. I think it's Saint, Saint Jean-Marie Vianney who said, the world will run better without the sun. And we know scientifically it can't. But we run better without the sun than without a mass. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful a mass is. Yeah. Because we deserve death for our sins we commit every day. Mm -hmm. But thank God for our priests who are offering a sacrifice to the Father there is a little balance. Yeah. And there's a time when the balance is not there, when there's no mass, and then the demons take over. Yeah. 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 So the mass is so necessary. That I understood that. I'm like, no, I need to be forgiven every day. <laughs> I need to take the body. Yeah. I need to, to, to give Jesus my prayers in the during the mass. But for them to be received and the sacrifice against my own sins for the sake of my soulful passion, forgive me. You know, my sins in the whole world, really what we do in divine mercy is, is the mass alive. Yeah. Now because we can take the body. So the Eucharist, without it, we are dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and with that, you, you talked about you know, receiving as a family. What if we saw the people that we're in mass with as not only just people we go to church with, but as our family, that, that that's, this is our family. Completely. Yeah. Yes, and they are. And also... <clears throat> When we go to Mass, we are taking our children with us. Even if they're not there, literally we can ask Jesus to do something about them, to help them. Mm -hmm. You will see many times in family when somebody's going to Mass and others are not necessarily going there, 
watch how, what will happen to that family, if, especially a mother. Because sometimes you go to pray in anger and like, you know, you look, my brother is so bad. But a mother is always merciful. Mm. A father is praying for their ch- the children, consecrating them to, to yeah. the father, to the sacred heart, the immaculate heart. I have heard a, a nurse who works in um, in a hospice. Mm. In hospice, she said, people whose parents have consecrated them and have prayed for them, you see a different way of dying. Even if they do not believe, in the end, they will struggle to die. They will struggle to die until sometimes later a priest will come and bless them and renew their faith and pray for them. And then they can die in peace. Yeah. So even the prayers we say, we take to mass, we're asking him to touch the people we love. Jesus honors them. Yeah. I heard one sweet story about um, a priest who was praying for his mother. His mother did not believe. So mm. the priest will beg Jesus. Father, please, my Lord, please, my Lord, save my mother. Let her believe. Let her come back to God. And then one time, he, the mother died in an accident. And Jesus, the priest was crying and hold, saying a mass for his mother, but holding the Eucharist. And he held the Eucharist and he's crying. And he goes like, I have only asked you one thing, to convert my mother before she dies. Now she dies in, in an accident. She's in hell. How can you just refuse me one thing? Somebody, one person I loved with all my heart. And then he had an apparition. He heard a, a voice. And the voice said, Priest of little faith, you asked me to convert your mother, but you didn't tell me how and when. Wow. Before your mother died, I allowed her to, be, to stay in her body until I showed myself to her. And she saw me and converted before her soul was taken out of her body. So I heard your prayer, but you didn't give me guidance how you wanted me to do it. And I did it my way. Right. You need to trust that when you do, you pray for somebody. Actually, I do something about it. Yeah. And that was like, oh, how good that is. Our Lord is. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I have chills. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I, you know, I hear from, you know, parents all the time that, that talk about, yeah, my, my child, they, they don't go to church anymore. They've kind of fallen away. I'm praying for them. And, and for parents to, to, to understand that still going to mass for them and praying for their children is vital. I mean, it is important. So important. If you have tried your best to talk to them, leave them, love them. Yeah. And talk to Jesus. Yeah. Talk to Jesus and his mother, they will do it. They'll do it. Yep. Yeah. They'll yeah. do it. Yeah. And yeah. just don't pray unceasingly. Don't stop. Yeah. Don't stop offering them. Don't stop bringing their name. And then just love them. Love yeah. them where they are. Be the good example. Be that light. Yeah. And you don't stop praying, doing novenas, you know, fasting for them. Our Lord will do something, receiving the Eucharist on their behalf. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. It is an honor to talk with you. I can't wait to see you in person, you know, in a um, few months. Oh, I appreciate um, that. We'll be praying and for please, you during that time. I, I hope I take pilgrims to Rwanda. I hope maybe one day you come. I, oh my goodness. I would yeah. love to. I would love to. Yes. Nice. Yes. We'll talk more about that because that thank would you be so phenomenal. Much. Yeah. But thank you. We will, we will look forward to seeing you and I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. God Thank bless. you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. Bye.